<laughs> like that. You think they'll accept me into the tribe? Hey everyone, I just read a book called 1491 that got me fascinated in native culture. I decided to stop in upstate New York at the Iroquois Indian Museum. I got to speak to a historian about native culture, and you're likely to see more content about Native Americans in the future. The audio quality is not great. I need microphones, but bear with me. I hope you enjoy. This is the symbol for the Haudenosaunee, also known as Iroquois. They call themselves Haudenosaunee. Uh, Iroquois originated with Europeans. But this is their, their symbol. It's pretty cool. Haudenosaunee means people of the longhouse. Longhouses are dwellings that they made and lived in in this region. Hi, how's it going? May I ask what you're up to? Yeah, I'm making a gustawa, which is a, the headdress of the Haudenosaunee. This is one I made from turkey feathers with a wood frame. Now, is, is, this, a, is it this headdress used for a particular thing, war, it ceremony? It's ceremonial. Yeah. You know, when, when we have the Haudenosaunee dances here, they wear their headdresses. When the five nations join together, they agreed not to fight each other, and they would greet each other by saying, Skenangoa. Skenangoa. Skenangoa, which means, do you follow the great peace? All right? So that way they would know, you know, so they, sure. so they knew each, you know, not to, not to fight. You know, today, like if I saw you, said Skenangoa, it just means I wish you great peace. They look really cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Want to try it on? Sure, <laughs> yeah. You can try on mine. <laughs> All right. Put this, there you go. For a this is the this is the front. Right here. Your head's about the size of mine. There you go. All right. Let's see what I look like here. <laughs> like that. You think they'll accept me into the tribe? If I, if I come with this on. I don't know about that. Well, that's pretty cool. I've been volunteering here three years and those buddies stopped me yet. So. No? Alright, just a dream of ours then. That's so interesting. Thank you for letting me put this on. That's really cool. You're welcome. Wow. Okay. Are you archaeologist or what? what historian. Historian. Yeah, I have a PhD. I'm sorry? I have a PhD. PhD? Cool. <laughs> I'm excited. I got a lot of stuff here I mean, that we didn't talk about. The Quahog clamshells, the Haudenosaunee would make their wampum belts from these. How do you pronounce it? Quahog? Quahog. They, they couldn't get these in their territory. They have to trade with tribes that live along the ocean. That's a beaver pelt. Beaver was very important to the fur trade. During World War I and World War II, a lot of Native Americans acted as uh, translators or code talkers for the army. Yes, yeah. Two, uh, Haudenosaunee nations did, the Oneida and the Mohawk. These are smaller bronze duplicates of medals that each tribe was given. Each tribe was given a gold medal. I had no idea. I thought they were all Navajo. I had no idea. No, no, no. no. There really were like cool. 31 tribes that were used. Really? Yeah. This is the Hiawatha belt, which was the wampum belt, which recorded the, uh, the formation of the Iroquois Confederation. When the five tribes joined together, you can see there's five bundled arrows. Mm -hmm. Dick Juanita, the peacemaker, he went around to each tribe with one arrow. He said, see how one arrow is like one nation? It can be broken if we bundle five arrows together like that. Clever story. Break them. Yeah. Now I have a beaver pelt, a that, uh, muskrat cool. pelt, otter pelt, a snapping turtle shell, and some goose feathers because they all play a role in the story of Sky Woman. Would you like me to tell it to you? Sure, yeah. At one time, the earth was all ocean, and nothing lived here except for fish, sea animals, and waterfowl. Above the clouds, there's a world called Sky World. Sky World, where people live just like they live on Earth today. However, they never became ill. One day, a beautiful young woman, Jo Jujitsu, she became sick. So her parents were very concerned because nobody had ever become ill in Skyward before. 
A spirit came to her in a dream and said she must take him to another village to a man named Bila Yawagan. He could heal her. So they took her to his village and he was able to heal her. He immediately fell in love with her and because he healed her. His parents granted him permission to marry her. Her parents granted him permission to marry her after he made her well again. Mm -hmm. So they got married, they were very happy. She became pregnant with his child. But well, one day the spirit came to him in a dream and said because she had become ill, she must leave Sky World and travel to another world and start a new race of people, the Hanusani. And the path to the new world was under the celestial tree, which was a great tree full of all different fruits which grew in his village. Uh, his name translated means holder of heavens. Her name means little uh, mature flower. So they traveled to the celestial tree and using his great strength, he pulled it up by the roots. He left a big hole in the clouds and he created a beam of light which would guide her uh, way to the new world. She took a bunch of fruit from the celestial tree in order to have seeds to plant in a new home. She jumped through the hole and she traveled through that beam of light, but she was worried that she would fall to her death and kill her unborn baby. Meanwhile, the animals saw her coming, so they held a big meeting, and it was determined that the geese would fly up to her and create a bridge with their strong wings and catch her and carry her. A huge snapping turtle came out of the ocean, and he said, I have a strong back, put her on my back. So the geese caught her and put her on the snapping turtle's back. Next, the turtle told the other animals, there's something on the bottom of the ocean called mud. I can swim to the bottom, but I can't carry mud with my short, stubby legs. If, you bring, if someone can bring up that mud, she'll have a place to live. So three animals, the beaver, the otter, and the muskrat, all like ants, but you carried and needed mud. First the beaver, and they were all good swimmers. First the beaver took a deep breath and he dove into the ocean. And using his broad, flat tail, he swam for a long time, but he eventually floated up dead. Next, the otter took a deep breath and using his whip tail, he swam for a long time, but he eventually floated up dead. So it was up to the little muskrat, a small but crafty and determined animal. The muskrat took a deep breath and he swam and swam and swam. He was gone a long time, twice as long as the beaver or the otter. But he eventually reached the bottom and grabbed a piece of mud and he swam to the top and he emerged from the water and he slapped it on the turtle's back just like this. And he created the Finger Lakes. And then the Sky Woman started dancing and singing counterclockwise around that little piece of mud. Wow. And to this day, all the dances of the hot and sunny are counterclockwise. Wow. And that little piece of mud expanded and expanded in North America. And to this day, the hot and sunny believe they live on Turtle Island. And if you look at an aerial photograph of North America, it does resemble a turtle. And how they figured that out without air or forget photography, I don't know. Wow. <laughs> That's wow. Now the turtle's back has 13 sections. And the Iroquois, or the Haudenosaunee, based their calendar on those 13 sections. There's 13 moons in a year. Uh, there's, there's 28 smaller sections around the turtle's back. So there's 28 days in a moon, I guess, roughly 28 days in a moon, and each moon has a different category during the year. There's planting moons, harvest moons, resting moons, hunting moons, etc., etc. Wow. Just I just read a book called 1491, mm -hmm. and it was such a good book, and I learned just so much I didn't even know about. I, I had no idea that some of the inspiration behind America being a democracy originated with them, yeah. which yeah. Was, was blew my mind, yeah. you know? Yeah. I, and, and without that, maybe we wouldn't be the same country or one at all. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it's influenced. Benjamin Franklin, like, uh, kind of cited them, the Iroquois, the uh, Confederation as mm -hmm. a model for the 
you know, and, and for the states, you know, because the states are really like separate little countries. You yes. Know? And, and so that's kind of like the way the uh, Iroquois ran things. Each, each each tribe is each nation is really a separate, you know, separate. Each tribe is a separate nation. Sure. But they join together. In but the fact that they would make decisions together and uh, you know all voted one way or the other, you know, representative from each tribe. I mean that that uh, is super meaningful for what we do now, yeah. you know? I mean, it means a lot. I mean, the fact that there's not one, uh, you know, one, I guess, monarch or dictator to tell us all what to do, we all have somewhat of a say, even if it's through representatives, you know?